consider the grammar here on the top left and consider the input string here. Let's construct the parse tree. Uh, we know that AD, uh, C can take the form of AD, so we make a C from those, and then using rule one, A can take the form of AB and then the non-terminal C. So A is A, B, and C. But there's a problem here, and it's, that's um, it, it, it's kind of a pain because a scanner, or not a scanner, a parser is going to come and look at these terminals, right? And it's going to read them left to right. It's going to read A, then B, then A, then D. And at what point does it know that this is the production that it has to happen first? Well, it's going to read A, and it's going to come over to the grammar, and both of these have A, and then it's going to read B, and okay, can we do this? Can we do this rule? Well, then we have C, and it gets really messy. Um, I I did this example. I built this parse tree because I kind of could kind of figure it out in my head. But um, it's when they get more complex, we we won't be able to do that, and less so will a computer be able to do that effectively. So, predictive parsing is a, it's more of a property than um, a way of doing things. It's a, it's it's parsing by looking at only the first non-terminal or the first terminal, excuse me, or look, just looking at the look ahead. So let's let's look at this um, grammar on the bottom left. We have an input A, B, D, E, and we look at the first terminal, and then we can look at all the rules here, and we see that rule one is the only one that starts with an A. So we know that we can apply rule one. So let's go ahead and do it. It's going to be a little bit weird at first, but bear with me for a second. A, B, and we know that we have to have a C. And so then we can go look at the um, uh, production rule number two, it, and C takes the form of D, E, and we can see that in our next two look-aheads, and we get C goes to D, E. And so that's a really powerful property. We don't have to look ahead um, too far. We only have to look at the first symbol to know which uh, production rule we're going to execute. Okay, so how can we know if a grammar lends itself to predictive parsing? The book has this statement. Um, predictive parsing requires first alpha and first beta to be disjoint. What does that mean? So first let's talk about uh, first let's talk about first. Okay, so we define first alpha to be the set of terminals that appear as the first symbols of one or more strings of terminals generated from alpha. Now we're going to see this again later in the semester. Um, but let's talk about a little bit about what it is right now. And let's just do it by example. So let's look at this um, set of terminals and non-terminals, the right-hand side of this production. And we have um, a few terminals followed by a non-terminal. And what is the first terminal that is going to appear from those four? Well, it's going to be A. That's going to result in A. So we have the set A. Now what about capital A, first capital A? Well, capital A can take the form of A, B, C, and then capital D. And that's it. That's the only thing it can take the form of. So we know that little a is going to be the first symbol of the string of terminals generated from capital A. Okay, let's look at the first of D. Well, D can take the form of X, Y, Z, D, E. We know that X is going to be the, the first one there, so we know that it's gonna, X is a possible. And we don't see any other productions with D on the left-hand side, and so we're done. How about the first of X, Y, Z, D, E? Well, that's just the right-hand side of D, and the first terminal is, is going to be X. Um, first of F, G, well, that's just F. First of H, I, that's H. First of E, okay, now it gets a little bit more interesting. E has two production rules with E on the left-hand side. The first one starts with an F, so F is in the set, in this first set, and H is also in the first 
set. Now it gets uh, more complicated when we have more um, complicated uh, grammars, but for now, that's the idea behind first. Now, is does this um, does this grammar work for predictive parsing? That's a great question. And so we let's look at the first of a. Let's actually do it in red here. First of a, first of d, and the first of e. Are those disjoint? Well, a the set a is disjoint with x. Great. And a and x are both disjoint with f and h, or with the first of e. And so yes, this grammar will work for predictive parsing.